And speaking of good points, we are getting to someone who makes a lot of them, and that is Professor Wolf. Now, Professor Wolf, democracy at work. I used to cover these at least once a week, and then I think I got busy and forgot about it. But this segment here, we need to talk about mega corporations ruining our world. And I think there's some interesting things that are said here. And we're going to take a look at three mega corporations that uh, I think you need to be aware of in reference to what else they own and what else they control. So the name of this video is called Economic Update Are Mega Corporations Ruining Our World? And we're going to go ahead and get right into it before we do so. If you haven't had a chance, go ahead and smash that like button. That helps me with the algo. Thank you very much. Mega corporations, and by that I simply mean the one, two, three large corporations that dominate so many different industries in the United States, typically use their economic power, strength, and size to buy political and cultural influence and power. They do that by buying mass media, being the great advertisers whose words and ideas you see all the time on the- Hold on to buy mass media. That one's huge. We'll get to that in a second. Mass media by donating to political parties and politicians much yep. of the money they need to maintain their activities, hiring and firing and organizing lobbyists to work with the elected officials between elections, and thereby to control political power. We know all of that. You don't need me for that. What I'm doing is responding to their reality. And that reality has recently been brilliantly analyzed over and over again by Ralph Nader, Chris Hedges, and many, many others well known to many of you. So let's begin with a thumbnail critique of the mega corporation in our culture. Most of them, many of them, are monopolists. That is, they are the only big fish in their industry. And in that position, once they've acquired it, they can then jack up the price of whatever it is they sell because they're the monopolist. There's nowhere else to go. Yep. You know, the famous example from American history, which I'll come back to, is the telephone. At a certain point, one company called AT&T, American Telephone and Telegraph, was the phone company. And they enjoyed saying to you, if you made a complaint about what they were charging you or the service they got for you, they would giggle at the other end of the telephone line they owned by telling you, you can always go to their competition. Ha ha ha. Nope. There wasn't any. <laughs> now, sometimes monopolists have gotten themselves into trouble by this kind of behavior. You know, at today, for example, we have two examples, Walmart and Amazon. Both of them have destroyed thousands of small mom and pop businesses around the country, and even some medium sized, bigger than mom and pop businesses. They've been even some of the ones that were actually really profitable back in the day. If you go to the Cambridge, uh, Cambridge side Galleria here uh, in Massachusetts, the gap is gone. Like these are like name brand stores, like the gap J crew, all of them psh, wiped out that whole third floor because people just aren't buying clothing the way that they used to in the stores because they can get everything online. Like a lot of people are buying those things from Amazon. Like I'd never seen that before where it has gotten to the point where you walk into the mall and the entire third floor of the mall is wiped out. And I remember when they announced that they were closing those stores and I was like, where's everybody going? And they said, don't have the sales. So we're closing up the third floor, all of the stores on the third floor, and it's going to be sold to commercial businesses because the gap doesn't make the money that it used to make. J crew doesn't make the money that it used to make. These stores were really popular. Like when I was, when I was in high school, Express doesn't make the money they used to make. A lot of people were able to get some of the same, like similar style of clothing online for cheaper. And Amazon is, is one of those sites that you can go to, to get those things. So it has effect, you know, not just the mom and pop businesses that he's referring to, but even some of these name brand, uh, larger businesses like the gap, for example, it's crazy. 
been a horrific destructive force in countless communities. Okay, that has gotten them a lot of opposition. There have even been communities that have blocked an Amazon warehouse from being yep. located there or blocked a McDonald's hamburger or a Walmart because they don't like what it means. So often monopolists yep. realize they can defend themselves better if they don't become the only one. Instead, when the competition winnows down the number of sh producers to two or three big corporations, they stop. They don't go to the ultimate one left because that will be a target for criticism. They have a stop sign. We'll stay with three or four. Yes. And this is important. Uh, Newton, Massachusetts, which is right outside of Boston, actually 15 minutes outside of Boston. Newton, Massachusetts actually is one of those cities that made that rule that they will not allow a Walmart uh, to be built there because they didn't want that to destroy the mom and pop businesses there. And they have a lot of them uh, in Newton, like even the hardware stores, mom and pop as well. Uh, the Target originally that's in Watertown, Massachusetts, actually wanted to come to Newton, Massachusetts. Again, Newton, Massachusetts said, no, we don't want that here because, again, we want to protect the mom and pop businesses. That's also a wealthy uh, that Newton's pretty wealthy. So just keep that in mind. They had the power and the numbers to, to prevent that from happening. Uh, so that Target ended up in Watertown, uh, Massachusetts, which at that time was more of, as they call it here, a blue collar uh, town. So that's another thing. If the town or the city has the resources and the, the numbers to prevent a Walmart or a Target uh, coming in, it's a lot easier for them to take care of that versus some of these towns that are working class or these towns that are uh, poor, they may not have those resources to prevent that from happening, unfortunately. By the way, in economics, that's called an oligopoly instead of a monopoly. Monopoly one, oligopoly a few. The best example is the automobile industry, which started in the 1930s with 30, 40, 50 car companies and then winnowed itself down to two or three for General Motors, Chrysler, and so on. What is typically done by these big corporations is what we call unfair competition. They're big and they use their bigness, sort of like a bully would, by insisting that suppliers give them a better deal on inputs than the little guys get, or yep. making sure that whoever they sell to privileges their brand over any competitors. Amazon is notorious for this, and there is something I want to give people a heads up about with Amazon. It used to be that Amazon actually did have the cheaper prices. But you know what I started to notice probably about eh, three years ago? I started to notice that Amazon didn't necessarily have the cheapest prices anymore. It was something I started, you know, and then it was kind of like, if you already had Prime, so you didn't have to pay for the shipping anyway, but the product, the price of the product was still higher than it was at the actual store. I started to notice this and pay attention to it. But Amazon was notorious for that as to like, we have everything. Walmart, same thing. We have everything now. So how do you compete if you're a business? How do you compete with Walmart if you don't have everything? How do you compete with Amazon if you don't have everything? And, and how do you compete with those companies if they're able to deliver, they have this prime, they're able to deliver packages to people within one to two days? How do you compete with that? How does, what's the company Etsy? How does Etsy, like, how do you compete with Amazon? eBay, how do you compete with Amazon now? Like, it's really difficult to do that. So yeah, it's, in a sense, it is unfair competition. It's important to understand that capitalism has always tended to produce monopolies and oligopolies. It's built in to this system. And the easiest way to explain it is to tell you and to remind you, because I know most of you know this, that competition efforts by little and medium-sized businesses uh, to outproduce one another, to offer a better service or a cheaper product or a better product, that always produces winners and losers, those who do well and their product sells and those who don't. 
What you may not understand is that not only are there winners and losers, but the winners absorb. Literally, they eat up the loser. The company. A good example of this, and I'll go back to it, was JP Morgan, right? So we talked about this before. We talked about the crisis that happened. The crisis that happened with the banking industry and JP Morgan, I always forget the name of it. I have to go back and check. But JP Morgan actually saved the federal government and the banks that were already failing, JP Morgan basically consumed those banks or devoured those banks, so to speak. And JP Morgan became bigger because of it. They had the money to do so. And they were known as they rescued the federal government at that point in time. But it's true. He's right. The winners, they usually devour the competition that's left or what's left of it. Company that goes out of business has to sell its equipment on the used equipment market. You know who buys it? The winner. The people who lose their jobs in the company that is outcompeted, you know where they look for a job next? In the company that won that competition. So what yep. slowly happens is many producers through competition become a few. And if it keeps on going, it becomes the oligopoly or the monopoly. That's there why the go. next time you hear some glib politician or some even glibber businessman or woman tell you about the wonders of competition, you're entitled to sneer. Competition is what causes monopoly and oligopoly. And then there are cases when competition is deliberately removed. Here's an example. Yep. You're a big corporation and you buy your inputs in the market, whatever they are. And after a while, you realize you're never quite sure you'll be able to get exactly what you want in the market at the quantity you want, at the price you want. And so tired of using the market, you buy the company, you absorb it. It's called vertical integration. You literally go out there, instead of buying the product from the other company, you buy the company. So that production of that input becomes internal to your enterprise rather than external and have to be bought in a market. Amazon is also known for doing that. Once again, when you hear on the 4th of July, the joys of our market economy, please remember that large corporations almost always are the result of many decisions made by the company's CEO and board of directors to get rid of the market, to remove the market from their situation by bringing the other companies that they used to buy and sell from to the inside. And you know when they bring them inside, how it's all worked out? By economic planning. The very thing that you denounce as socialism is what every large company does inside because it's gotten rid of the market outside because it wanted to yeah. make more profits and have them be more secure. Very, very wise words there from Professor Richard Wolf. Now, if you want to see the full video, because there's other things he talks about, he gets into like vertical, excuse me, vertical integration and things like that. But I wanted you to see that particular uh, portion. But the name of this video is called Economic Update Are Mega Corporations Ruining Our World? And I think this is really important for people to see. Go listen to the full segment. I listened to the full segment. But I want to show you exactly what he's talking about, like what it looks like. And I want to show you this using three different companies. The first company I want to show you is everyone's favorite feisty mouse, Disney. Now, Disney owns a lot of things, and you may not be aware of all of them. So let me make this bigger. Oh, wait, the mouse is on this one. So there is this graphic. It's hard to see it in the graphics, so I'm just going to show you a little bit here, and then I'll show you um, the companies that are listed. But this is the mouse, the mouse ears. You see Marvel. Remember Disney? Remember they bought Marvel? So you have Marvel. Then you have Fox Entertainment Group. There's Walt Disney Studios. There's ESPN. There's more and more, but it's easier to see it here where they list them. I'm going to make this a little bit larger just for the people in the biz act. 
What companies does Disney own? And this is important to see. So here's a much simpler list of companies Disney owns that aren't as obvious or don't sport Disney in the name. A, B, C, ESPN, 80% stake, Touch Tones Pictures, Marvel, Lucasfilm, A and E, Lucasfilm, for those who don't know, that's like Star Wars. So remember they brought Star Wars at 1.2. A and E, 50% equity holding with Hearst Corporation, the History Channel, 50% equity, Lifetime, 50% equity, Pixar, Hollywood Records, Vice Media, 10% stake, Core Publishing. So that's a few. And now I want to point to something, ABC. Think of all the, I want to think about news. Think of all the news networks that are on ABC. And maybe not necessarily just news, but even some of the talk shows like The View and think about some of the political takes that those women have on that panel. These things are important. Let's go on. What does Disney own as far as recognizable brands and film franchises? So that's Star Wars, the Muppets, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Disney Princess and Princess, uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, Pixar films, Winnie the Pooh franchise, Indiana Jones franchise, Grey's Anatomy, which is a popular show on ABC. What companies does Disney own that you never heard of? Maker Studios. Get this one, guys. Hold on. Maker Studios, it's a production company for popular YouTube channels that has since been folded into other areas of the company after a troubled few years. So Disney even had their toe dipped into the YouTube space. Steamboat Ventures. It's a venture capital company that invests, that invests in web top startups. For instance, the popular GoPro, Photo Bucket, and a host of Chinese social media and gaming companies. They also own dozens of miscellaneous property companies from Alani to Port Canaveral, Florida. Port Canaveral, Florida. Many of these are leftover companies from when Walt had to hide his investments through other company names to buy land for Walt Disney World. International Media Networks, see? This is what he was talking about. International Media Networks like ATV, RTL2, RDS, Tel, Tele5, Kivudu aren't heard about here, but are a big deal abroad. Earthstar Inc. is the company for private jets to cart Disney executives around the world. And then it goes into what they don't own. Now, that's Disney. Let's move on to another company I think you need to look at. Amazon. Now, I mentioned Amazon owns other things. Imagine that. What companies does Amazon own? Let's dive on into this list here. Companies owned by Amazon. Whole Foods Market. Zappos. That's the shoe apparel uh, company. Amazon Robotics and Amazon Robotics is also a part of other corporations, which include the Gap. Remember I told you the Gap was closing? The Gap, Walgreens, Staples, Gift Group, Office Depot, Crate and Barrel, Saks Fifth Avenue. So even if you go to these stores and you think that you're actually helping out just that company and you're not giving your money to Amazon, Looks like if you follow the train, you're still giving your money to Amazon. Isn't this a mess? Let's go on. There's more. PillPack Inc. Now, this is a pharma company, an online pharma company based in Manchester, New Hampshire. They even have their, their hand in the pharma industry. There's more. Twitch Interactive. I don't really mess with Twitch, so... You guys, if you do Twitch in the chat, let me know. MGM Holdings Incorporated, that one is pending. Let's go on. Audible, I knew that one. Audible is the most popular auto book platform in the world. I think you guys probably knew that. Goodreads. IMDB. They're the ones that give the plot summaries from like movies. If you look up a movie, it has like the IBMD thing. 
uh, Ring, which I think some of you knew this. That's the security system that's owned by Amazon. Lab 126. This is a subsidiary Amazon uses to develop and manufacture its branded lines of integrated consumer electronics, such as Kindle, Echo, and Fire TV. Amazon Fresh. And this one even has, it's in international cities, such as Berlin, Hamburg, London, Milan, Munich, uh, Rome, and Tokyo. Abe Books, another online marketplace for books. Woot an online retailer based in Dallas, Texas. And I'm showing you guys this because you may be ordering things from these companies and I realize that you're still supporting Amazon. And 15, 15 and more additional companies owned by them. Book Depository, Blink, Shopbop, Cosmicology, Eero, Zooks, Fabric.com, and Annapurna Labs. So Amazon owes, owns quite a bit. Now we're going to move on to one that a lot of people have not even heard of, but you should know about BlackRock. And I've, I've talked about it before uh, on this show, and I'm going to talk about it again because you need to know BlackRock is the biggest company you've never heard of, but you also need to know that this is very important. A media monolith, BlackRock and Vanguard, are two of the big three passive fund asset management firms. Third is State Street. That's important for people to know. Now it should have on here who they who do they own? I thought it was on here. Uh, did I skip it? Let me know if I skipped it. I, I thought I saw it on here. They mentioned, if not, I, I should be able to remember some of it off the top of my head. Yada, yada, yada. I'm gonna have to look this up again. Shoot. Balls. I thought I had this in here. Who does BlackRock? No, you, you guys hold on a second because you need to see this. I thought I had that one, but... um. What? I just want to show it to you because I like to show it so that way you can always refer back to it. Um, Oh, this is the one I think, the portfolio. Balls. Eric, let me know if you see it in that article. I thought it was in that article. I thought when I read it, it was there, but I could be mistaken. Now it's hard for me to find it. I hate this. Don't you guys hate this when this kind of happens? Um... um. Because I had all this like, aha, I found it. That was the, that is the right link. So let me see. It's probably because I made it bigger. Okay. So that is the right one. There's a list there where it says found it. Okay. Sorry. So I passed it. So let me go back up right here. Vanguard and BlackRock are the top two owners of Time Warner, Comcast, Disney, and News Corp, four of the six media companies that control more than 90% of the U.S. media landscape. And that is all I really wanted you to see here in this part two. This is something you need to share with everybody. Vanguard and BlackRock are the top two owners of Time Warner, Comcast, Disney, News Corp, four of the six media companies that control more than 90% of the media landscape, thus controlling the media narrative, controlling the narrative that goes out in mainstream media to as many people as possible. Now there's more. Together, BlackRock and Vanguard own 18% of Fox, 16% of CBS, 13% of Comcast, 
which owns NBC, MSBC, CNBC, and the Sky Media Group, 12% of CNN and 12% of Disney, which owns a number of subsidiaries. So in long story short, forget what I showed you about Amazon, or don't forget it, but remember Amazon, remember Disney, but at the end of the day, it all leads back to BlackRock and Vanguard. And that's what people need to know. And people need to talk more about that. Just keeping it real. They control the narrative. I'm gonna go to some of these comments here. Professor Wolf is always on it. JB says, I have tried to buy things straight from the manufacturer and they redirected me to Amazon. I hate it. Yep. Thanks for the super chat, Roger Meadows. Yep. Monarch, Monopoly, Oligarch, oligo Oligopy. The Oracle says, when you think about it, a political system with just two major parties is an olig oligopolistic model. Fraught with the same weaknesses, a consolidation of power through the absence of competition. You know, our next story is going to get into that. Kill Yuri Gorgis, as Jimmy Dore says, you'll have in the future three job options, Amazon, Google, or Walmart. <laughs> oh, it's funny, but it's scary. It, it, that could be true. Uh, JB, Savvy Disney basically owns Orlando, Orange County, Kissimmee, St. Cloud, Oscala County, et cetera, a huge chunk of central Florida. Wow. I, I still have never been to Disney World. Can you guys believe it? So yeah, Richard Wolf was right. There's probably others out there, but those are the ones I think you really need to, to pay attention to.